Hi there and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian and today we're going to look at this HYC 6200X chainsaw. Can I say at the outset that chainsaw safety PPE must be worn when you're operating this equipment and that it's only to be used by experienced trained operators. So I'll lay the contents out on the table so you can see exactly what you get and then we'll go through the basics of assembly with you. So I've laid the contents out on the table so you can see exactly what you get. First of all, we have the chainsaw head unit itself. Secondly, we have the carrying bag. We have the chain bar guard, the chain bar. We have the toolkit here. We'll go through that a little later. It comes with two Hyundai chains. The mixing bottle, we'll go through the importance of this shortly. And finally, we have the user manual. Now I do recommend that you read the user manual thoroughly before use. So your chainsaw also comes with this useful storage bag. Obviously put the chain sheath on and you can undo the zip, put the chainsaw in the bag, it stores it nicely and protects it while transporting. So that's just a little nice extra that comes with your machine. And again in the toolkit there are a few tools in here. Obviously an allen key, there's a chainsaw file and it's also a small screwdriver for doing adjustments. So pretty much everything is covered. In fact, there are two Allen keys in here. So pretty much everything is covered. So if I take this socket out of the toolkit, the first thing we're going to need to do is to remove the chain brake and bar cover assembly. To remove it, we need to turn the chain brake off. So this would be the on position. That would be chain brake off, and that will allow us to disassemble it. If the chain brake is in the on position, It'll be tight around the flywheel, we can't get it off. So push it back, chain brake off. So you'll see the two bolts here. We'll just loosen them off and remove the two nuts. And I'll put those to one side safely. Okay. Then it will just pull out and away from the unit. So now that we've removed the chain brake, if we go to our toolkit, we'll find this bump spike and two Allen bolts and the appropriate Allen key that fits the bolts. Okay, so we need to fit the bump spike on here and you can see there are two tapped holes in the casing. And the bump spike goes on in this orientation. So if you look at it, you can see that there's a long sweeping curve and a shorter sweeping curve, but the long sweeping curve goes towards the top of the chainsaw. So I'll just place it in position, just Get that screw started in there. Same with this one. Get the true screw started. Wind them down into position until they're both home. And then uh, once they're both down against the bump spike, I'll just lock them down and tighten them up into position. Okay, so we need to fit this bump spike in first before we think about fitting the chain. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to take it off again. It makes it easier for me to show you the chain. But I'm going to take it off again, but we do need to fit this before we fit the chain. Because obviously when we fit the chain and chain bar, we can't access these screws. So we're going to fit the chain onto the bar loosely first of all. But it's important that we get the orientation of the chain correct. As you can see, I've got the logo the right way up as you can see it here that's straightforward enough now there's a little symbol here on the end of the blade which shows the direction of the chain and it shows the shape of the link so if i look at this silver link here which is the teeth on it the shape of this link corresponds to the shape on the picture you can see the long slopey side the short steeply angled side and they do correspond if i flip it the other way now I will note that I'm wearing gloves to do this because I'm handling a chain which is brand new and very sharp. But whenever handling a chain, just wear some protection for your hands because it, you know, it's quite easy to cut yourself. So as you can see, I've set it up here now and that link is the wrong way around. So that chain would be incorrect. So I'll flip the chain again and put it back the correct way around. Okay. So that's back the right way around, as you saw it earlier, and I can now slowly start to fit the chain into the groove around the bar. Okay, so I'll just gently work it along, making sure it goes into the groove along the way. 
Now a new chain can be a little bit stiff. But as you can see, that chain is now in the groove along the bar. So now that we're all up to speed on how the chain goes and how it fits in the groove, I just pop the chain out of the groove again. I'm going to take the chain bar and without changing the orientation, I'm going to fit it on there like that. So the long slot, two bolts through and tuck it underneath the clutch assembly. So now, again, without changing the orientation, I'll take the chain, feed it underneath the clutch assembly and again, it's onto the drive wheel under there. Then I can go up to the top and refit the chain into the groove. Let's just turn that a little. Okay, back into the groove, just as you saw me do earlier on. Now I need to make sure we're in the groove the full length. So all the way to the bottom. There we are, that's that side in. That's that side in. Now I can pull the chain this way just a little and let it lie down. So again, to fit this, we need to make sure that the brake is in the off position. I've just put this back on, but that's the off position. Away is the on. So now I simply locate this over the two bolts, just gently, and it should sit into position. So I'm just gonna remove one of my gloves for this. I'm just gonna refit these two screws, or nuts, I should say. There we are. Just make sure that locates tidily. Okay, so in this circumstance, I'm just trying to show realism here, it doesn't push down onto the bar. Now let me show you why. So I'll just take that nut off, okay? So we're now ready to refit the chain cover, the chain brake cover. Now, we need to make sure that the brake is in the off position, first of all. That's back, okay? Now, a couple of things that are important here. Obviously, these two screws have to pass through these two holes, like this. But another point of interest, or of note here, is that the adjuster, which is, let me bring it in shot for you, this pin here, when we put it together, needs to line up with this slot. Now obviously the chain isn't adjusted and this can move up and down slightly and you may be able to get it to fit in that slot by just moving the bar as you saw me do. But we may need to adjust that pin using this screw. So I'm just going to place it in place. And I can see that pin needs to come back a little. So I'll just give it a couple of turns. Let's see. There we are. So... If you look now, just with hand pressure, you can see, let me use this, that the chain brake will go all the way down against the bar. If it doesn't, you may need to move the alignment of that pin just to get it started. So with that in position, I'll hold it there and just loosely refit the two nuts just to clamp it all up in place. And then I'm not going to tighten them, just going to do them up. But I'm not going to tighten them. So there's loads of slack in here at the moment. It's just bringing everything close. I'll go back half a turn. Again, loads of slack. Okay, that's very nearly there. Just come back in half a turn. And that keeps the chain bar loose. Now we do need it to remain loose when we do our adjustments. So, these two nuts are loose. And you'll notice I have the chain bar on a piece of wood. Just to hold it up. So the weight of the chainsaw is down and that's kicking the bar in the upwards direction. Let me just demonstrate. Okay, so that is holding the bar in the upwards direction. Just going to make sure that all the chain is still in the groove, which it is. Now, this chain is incredibly slack at the moment. As you can see, it's not even in the groove at the bottom. So, we need to turn the adjustment screw. So I'll just go to the adjustment screw. Remembering we haven't tightened these down very firmly yet. And as I turn, you should see, and you can, the chain going up into the groove. So I'm just going to, as a starting point, just turn it so the chain's in the groove there. And I'll just have a little look at the tension. Now, just with a finger pinch, I can lift that chain out of the groove to the point where it just about comes out. In fact, it does here. That's a good starting point, and it snaps back into the groove. So that's a great first adjustment. So, with it in that mode, I'll re-tighten the two nuts, nip them up first, okay, 
that one tight, and that's that one tight, and put the chain brake on. Always a great practice whenever doing anything with a chainsaw, if you're not actually cutting, and leave the chain brake on. Once you've started the engine and you're about to cut, that's when you take the chain brake off. Okay, little safety tip there. So, that's the first adjustment of the chain. Now what I will say at this point is that when you first start using the chain, this chain will do an initial stretch. So you may need to go through this procedure again of retensioning the chain. So just keep an eye on it during the first hours and days of use, just to see if that chain stretches, the chain starts to become slack, just loosen off the two nuts, retension a little bit on the screw by turning it clockwise until you get to this sort of tension. And that's pretty much it. Once it's tight, make sure you retighten the nuts. And that's the optimum tension for your chain. So, to protect myself and the chain when I do the rest of this demonstration, I'm just going to put the uh, blade sheath on. So, fluids next. The fuel oil mixture, the two-stroke oil and fuel goes in this one at the handle end. And you'll see another filler cap here at the chain end. This is where you would put your chainsaw lubricating oil, the lubrication for the saw blade, for the chain. There is a specific oil for this. Um, it's readily available in most tire shops and what have you, and garden centers, that sort of thing. Chain lubricating oil. Don't be tempted to put normal engine oil in here. It's way too thin and it would run out and make an awfully you know, bad mess all over the place. Spray oil all over the chain, all over yourself and what have you. Use chain lubricating oil. So. To fill it, I'm just going to tip it on its side. We would unscrew the cover here, anti-clockwise direction, fill this chamber with chain lubricating oil. And once it's full, probably wouldn't fill it to the very top, just below the top of the reservoir there. We can refit the filler cap. Have I got that right? Yes. Nice and firm so we don't lose it. So that would be the chain lubricating oil. So we'll move on now to the fuel. As you can see here on the label, which comes with a unit, fresh unleaded fuel petrol mixed with 40 to 1 with semi-synthetic two-stroke oil or Aspen 2 pre-mixed oil. So if you put neat petrol in this machine, the engine will last probably three or four minutes and seize up. Vitally important that you mix it correctly at a ratio of 40 to 1 with a two-stroke oil. You can actually buy this Aspen 2 pre-mixed fuel, which will also work with this unit, which is basically, it's already done for you at a ratio of 40 to 1. So, much as at the front, fill a cap, anti-clockwise, remove the filler cap, we can fill it with fuel pre-mixed or fuel that we've mixed. I'll go through the bottle set setup on that shortly. So we'll fill it up, again, leave it just below the top, and we can re-screw the filler cap into position, tightening it up nice and firm so we don't get any leaks. So that would be the lubrication and the fuel in the machine. Okay, so the bottle we supply does give you graduations. On the left here, we have a ratio of 25 to one, but on the right here, you'll see these two lines. The bottom one says gas, okay, gasoline, it, petrol, fresh unleaded petrol. What we would do is put the bottle on a nice level surface and fill it up with fresh unleaded petrol up to this lower line, okay? So be quite accurate with this, so make sure the bottle's level, fill it up to this lower line. Then we could take our two-stroke semi-synthetic oil, top it up to where it says the oil line, the top one here, and that would give us the 40 to one ratio. So rather than underdo it with the oil, slightly above is always better than slightly below the line. It won't hurt if you put a little bit too much oil in, but it will hurt if you don't put enough. So obviously you don't want to go double that amount, but be accurate with it, fill your fuel to here, top it up with oil to that. Once you've done that, make sure you've got your lid firmly attached. Give the bottle a few good rotations and shakes just to make sure that that two-stroke oil is well mixed. Give it a little shake. Once it's mixed, let the bubble settle, what have you, and then that fuel in this canister is ready to load into your fuel tank. So let's go through some of the controls. This end of the unit has basically most of the controls, okay? So we have the throttle. Now, the throttle is under here, and as you can see, I can't push it up unless I push this top lever down. So during use, obviously your palm would be on that, 
and you can pull the throttle. And that is the accelerator for the engine. So when you let go, the engine would run at idle speed. And obviously when you pull the throttle for cutting, the engine will rev up to maximum speed. Next to this, we have the on-off switch. As you can see, I've got it pushed down here. That's the off position. That would be the on position. So all this switch does is enable the machine to have a spark. If I push it down there, it kills the spark. The engine will stop and it also will not start. So we would need it in that position to start. Okay, more controls here. This is the choke lever and this is the primer bulb. So for instance, I haven't put fuel in this unit, but if I had and it was ready to use, I would push this primer bulb several times. And that primes fuel from the fuel tank up into the carburetor. It runs through a bypass and back into the tank. So you'll see this primer bulb filled with the fuel. You'll be able to see it easily because it's colored with a two stroke oil in it. And when you pretty much don't see any more bubbles in the bowl, that's primed ready to go. So choke lever. With a cold engine, you'll find it necessary to pull out this choke and it will latch in position. This is the point now where we've primed it, we're switched on and we can start pulling the recoil to start the machine. So we'd adopt the normal stance with our foot in the hand trigger, one hand on here and we start pulling the machine. If the machine starts or even attempts to start, we'd need to turn the choke off. And to turn the choke off, we pull the throttle and the choke will click into the off position. I'll show you that around there so you can see. So if the choke were on and the engine had attempted to start, so it did like one or two pulses, I now turn the choke off by pulling the throttle and the choke goes in, switches the choke off. Then I would continue pulling, the engine will start up and we're ready for use. Obviously, we would remove the sheath from the chain. We're making sure the chain brake is on. We let it idle just gently for a few seconds. Then obviously taking great care, we turn the chain brake off and then we can gently accelerate the engine up until it gets warm and it's running evenly. A cold engine obviously will run a little bit lumpy to start with, but once you've revved it for a couple of seconds and it's gone up to full revs, Pretty much, you can let go of the throttle, the engine will idle. We would then put the chain brake back on to keep it in a safe condition so the chain can't rotate until we're cutting. So on that note, with a warm engine, so we just stopped the machine, we went and did something else for maybe for a minute or so, we may not need to use the choke. So basically we can just, as we stated earlier, with the chain brake on, switch it on, pull the recall, engine starts, it's pretty much ready for use again. If it were, we were ready to take our cut, we turn the chain brake off, do our cut, always at the end of a cut, put the chain brake on. Just one other thing of note, just take the guard off. With the chain brake off, so the chain is free to rotate, I rev it and the chain rotates, when I let go of the throttle, that chain should stop. Not come to a dead stop, maybe a turn or two and come to a stop. That tells us that the clutch has disengaged and that it's in a safe working condition. If that chain continues to rotate, then we need to investigate. So, you know, it, it's a problem. It's the machine would be in a dangerous state. We may need to adjust the carburetor. We may have it all glued up in the clutch. We would need to investigate, but refer to your user manual for this. If it is rotating, when you let go of the throttle, don't be tempted just to stop it using the chain brake, or you will use the chain brake. Don't be t tempted to carry on, but just use this to stop it rotating. Fix the problem first, because whenever we turn that chain brake off and we're not pulling the throttle, that chain should not rotate. Only time it should rotate, chain brake off, and when we're accelerating with the throttle. Okay, let me just put the chain bar back on. So just throwing in a couple of safety tips while we're at it. If at any time you want to stop the chainsaw, put your chain brake on. Let the engine come back to idle if you've been revving it hard. Let it idle back down and then just switch it off on the switch. So your chainsaw will start readily without using this feature, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. On the side of the engine here, on the head, is this black button. If I push it in, that releases compression from the engine. 
so that when I pull over with a recoil during the first turn it allows me to pull it gives me more momentum and the engine will spin over faster and start more readily we don't need to do anything with it the second there's compression which will happen on the second stroke around that button will pop back out ready for the next time okay so that's the decompression and it will make it easier on the hand when you're pulling the recoil you don't need to use it most people don't bother with it but it's there should you have difficulty starting it makes it much easier to pull the engine over because you're not dealing with that first part of compression to pull out on the recoil well i do hope you found this demonstration useful for any other safety advice on chainsaws we do have another video on our website so for more information on this or any of our other products visit www.hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk. I've been Adrian and thank you for watching.